so, so cool to see all the behind the scenes of the content. <laughs> so funny. So funny. Recording ads, bro, it's the worst. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the video. My name is Jeremy Pogue, and I help online coaches scale with ads and setters. And today I'm joined by my good friend and team member, Matthias. Welcome to the channel, man. Big pleasure. Big it's, pleasure. Uh, it's such an honor to, uh, to sit down with you. I know we've been working together for quite some time now, and we've, uh, we've done some damage. And so today I really just want to kind of uh, get your perspective on kind of how things are. So obviously you're my sales rep, and so you are in charge of enrolling every single client into the program. And with that as well, obviously there's, uh, there's a lot of opportunities to choose from. I feel fortunate that you chose um, to want to work here as well, and uh, it's such an honor. And just knowing how well taken care of every single one of our clients is, um, talking to you and just knowing that you have their best interests at heart, it means the world to me because it's such a, an important part of the client journey because it's like the handoff from not knowing like what's, yeah. what's on the other side of the paywall and like trusting us with thousands of dollars in their life and business. And it's so important to really just nail the sales process and just handing that over to the client success team. And you've done just such an exceptional job of that. So um, yeah, man, incredible work and just really excited to, to chat with you today. Yeah. And on that, I want to say that the honor is mine here. Cause like I have I've been on a lot of coaching offers, sold a lot of stuff, saw a lot of backends, saw, saw a lot of stuff in the industry. And this is hands down, the most exceptional thing that I've ever witnessed. Wow. And it's an honor to be a part of it. That's Thank just you, the man. truth. Thank like, you. Honestly. What, uh, what makes it like that? I believe the, the experience that we give to the clients, you, Eduardo, especially, the how vibrant the energy is inside the community and just the type of support that they get. Like how many people we get in and like, it's, it's funny, like maybe people on sales go, that's normal. Like there's a little bit of apprehension at times because oh, yeah. there's a lot on the table. Like you're betting on yourself, you're betting on you, on what you do, on Summit and everything else. Mm -hmm. And then it's funny because once everybody joins, it's like so, such a warm like welcome. And, and then the experience is just exceptional and the results come by themselves. Like they just stay in care of, like not even speaking about, speaking about that. That's awesome, so, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's super cool too. And like obviously right now we're here in Marbella, Spain at a week long mastermind retreat. So there's yeah. been 28 or 29 of us here this week. So we've got the whole team here in person and then a lot of our um, higher level clients as well. So it's been really cool. Like I know from my side watching you and Nicola just be professionals this week. And you've like sat down with all of our clients, helped them out, coached them. And honestly, like more importantly, just led by example. And you showed them, like everybody here who's building teams, who yeah. have teams yeah. and stuff like that, you've really just shown them what it looks like to be like true A players. And like from my side, kind of just standing back objectively, just seeing that and like, Everyone's asking questions about you guys. Everyone's asking questions to you guys as well. And it's just super cool to kind of just see you both just really uh, take the reins and, and lead by example. So um, curious to know, like, because you're obviously extremely good at what you do, but you also care so much about the person you're talking to. Like, where does that come from? And like, how do you kind of find the balance between like, when do I actually like kind of push someone to take action versus when do I kind of like, step back when like you're on a call with somebody and uh and you know we can help them yeah i mean that really depends on the person on the conversation that you're having like some people may need a little bit of like holding their feet to the fire and just pointing like just being out of it but just pointing a mirror in front of them of and then it's their decisions and their best interests like whatever they feel like is best and I do have the conviction because I've seen it like dozens and dozens of times with all the people that we have rolled in the past four months. That everybody like has had a substantial difference in their business, their life, and everything else. It's just like it's just net positive. So that of course gives me conviction. 
to like be able to stand in the fire right. if needed. Right. It just gives me certainty that I'm doing, as we mentioned on a team meeting one time, like God's work in a way. And, and yeah, some people may need a little bit of more, more space and, and then to come in, some people, yeah, need a little more, not push, but like just to stand in the fire for a little bit, for a little bit. Yeah, a little, uh, some people just need their, their standards to be challenged a little bit, yeah, right? Correct. correct. And I know a couple of days ago in one of my workshops, um, one of the clients asked a question about like kind of sales and like his sales rep and stuff like that. And yes. I showed them the recording of an onboarding call that I had last week with a new client that you enrolled. And what he said to me just at the end of our call, he's like, hey man, I just want to give you some feedback on the program so far. And I was like, uh-oh. Um, but uh, he's like, dude, it's, it's been exceptional just from the start to finish. He's like, I just followed you like two days before. Yeah. And like when you pitched a call, he's like, I decided, yeah, why not, right? I have zero intention of buying anything. I'm not interested, like, like in his mind, he was like telling himself that as he was going into the call. Obviously he didn't tell us that, otherwise we wouldn't have pitched him. Um, but nonetheless, he, he said like, yeah, let's, let's get onto the call and just kind of like, just kind of kick some tires and, and learn what's going on. And he said that that sales call alone with you was worth more than the investment that he actually ended up paying to join the program. And within his first like two weeks, because he wanted to go through the program, um, the whole thing before booking his onboarding call with me. Mm -hmm. So he went through the program mm -hmm. the first two weeks. He like doubled or tripled his business just like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you challenged him on that sales call to raise his standards and show him what's possible. And then when he got into the community, that just took it to a whole nother level too. And I think a lot of people, like a lot of people have bad experiences with being burned by other programs yeah, and stuff like that because the sales guy hypes, hypes something way up and then you get it in on the other side and you're like, oh, right? Um, but when, when we hear, like when I hear and see scenarios like this, it just like, it just makes me just feel so so honored to have somebody sure. like you who, who genuinely cares, not just about making a sale and getting somebody in the program, but actually just about like, yeah, challenging them and their current beliefs and their yeah. current standards and just seeing how that before like myself and Eduardo, like the CS team even has a chance to like, to get in with them, he's already just seen insane results straight out the gate. And I think that's just a testament to um, kind of just how, how much you've kind of mastered that art. So I just want to say like, respect for Long that. Long way man. to go. Long way to go. Yeah. 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 Um, what would you say to somebody who is maybe like running a sales team right now mm. and, or like they're looking to hire a sales mm. rep or they already have some and they're maybe not too sure if like they're the right fit or something like that. Like from your side, like what do you look for? Um, when it comes to like an offer and wanting to just like lock in and, and commit to something? Well, for example, with you, it was just pure alignment from the beginning. Like since I got introduced to you, to our connection, whatever, mm -hmm. and we spoke to, we spoke to, uh, the first time, met on our Zoom, I don't know, the, energy was just right. And I saw the real long-term potential of like what that could look like, like six months, 12 months on the line, which is only getting bigger and better. And, and also like fucking vibe with you. Like as a person, as a leader, more so. And that counts. Of course, having exceptional delivery, like that's one of those things, like having great fulfillment, just like, just makes the whole, makes everything so much better, it's insane. Like from the marketing, of course, to the sales side, to just how you feel as a team. Like when you get on a team meeting, you, I don't know, it just creates a different type of energy within the team and in the culture. Yeah. So, yeah, I think there was like real alignment for myself, 
for who I am and who you are, I believe, and the kind of vision that you have and that I have for myself. And, and then, yeah, great, just great vibrations from the start, honestly. That's awesome, man, yeah. yeah. Um, and it, it, it's interesting you say that too, because I noticed a lot of the times, like with myself as well, it's a lot yeah. of, like most of it has to do with like the intangible things that you can't like put a value on, you can't put a number to, yeah. or like say, like have like a tangible way to measure it. A lot of times it is the intangible, like the connection, the, the, the alignment and stuff like that. And again, like that's the stuff that you can't really measure yes. or manage. It's just like one of those things that you just, you just know, right? And yeah, like Agreed. you said, you've been on, you've been selling for a lot of offers. I've had a lot of sales reps. I mean, I used to be one well myself right. um, a couple of years ago. And like, yeah, when you like, it's one of those things It's like, when you know, you know. And when you don't, you're kind of like, kind of doubting and you're kind of questioning a little bit and you're just kind of un uncertain, unsure, um, which is, if it's not a hell yes, it's a hell no, Yeah. right? And I think one thing that's really cool with us and, and the team is just like, we all share the same values and principles, yes. which is really cool. Yes. And like transparency is, is yes. a huge one. And um, we just like, not only do we say that, but like we act it out and we live that every single day, right? Through our actions and, and stuff like that too. And a lot of people can say one thing, but then they do something else. But um, between like, it, it's super cool for me to see just like between you and like, Timmy, Maddie, Nicola, Eduardo, so like true. everyone is just so fully, true. fully in alignment there. And yes. uh, we might have different interests. I mean, we have similar interests anyways, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. but like the people, like everybody else, like it's like some people have different interests, but as long as like the values and the principles are aligned, that's all that matters. How do you feel like you managed to attract such a team? It's funny, man. A lot of people ask me how to like find and hire and stuff like that. Right. And, like, um, here in the workshops, I like I broke down like the hiring funnel, yeah, like right, run right, ads right. and everything like that to find a really good pool of talent. But like, it's interesting. Like everybody on the team right now has come like, like just naturally. It's just like like you said, like attracted instead yep. of like yep. sought out and, and like yep. found. And I think that is just a result of like personal development and just mm -hmm. like self growth. Because mm -hmm. the more valuable valuable that you become as a person the more valuable people you attract around you as well, right? 12 months ago, I would not be able to attract and sure as hell wouldn't be able to keep the team that we have today, right? And then like 12 months from now, if you, like five, 10 years from now, as I continue to grow and as we all do, then like we're just gonna continue attracting yes. higher caliber people yes. that also just share that alignment too. And yes. uh, like, I mean, one thing that's been really cool too is like, um, when we were hiring a setter a couple months ago, yeah. like you just completely spearheaded that. You're like, hey, dude, like I will, I'll interview like 30 people or whatever. I'll send you the, the top few, and then uh, and then we we found one, and he's just been a machine, right? Machine. And again, with that though, it's like we we share similar values, and uh, true. It's it's been really fascinating for me to kind of just like see it all just like come to fruition and just lock in. And it's one of those things that it's easier said than done and it takes a while, but when you nail it. One thing that I found super interesting and like felt it even more here in Marbella, it's like everything that it's been this week and like this villa, all the people that are in this villa, the kind of energy there is in here, it's like, and the team that you build, that we have, is like an expression of who you are honestly and not only yeah not only in the sense of the business but it's like truly on a deeper level of like who you also like the vision that you have for yourself for where you see the company being like five ten years down the line mm. like I think that just comes true like it just expresses itself and yeah, it's like that's it's like that's center in a way. If that makes sense. Hundred percent. Yeah, and the way like an analogy you can use too is kind of like the size of like a planet. Yeah. It's like I think it's uh, some sort of Newton's law of gravitational pull or whatever. I made a YouTube video on this, but it basically means like 
the larger the planet, like the more mass it has, the more gravitational pull it has, the right. more it attracts right. things to it. Right. So right. as you grow as a person, just your exactly. value and and, exactly. and who you are, and when you put yourself out there and stuff like that, it's like you just, you you can't help it, but it just like you attract more people way quicker, exactly. but they're way higher quality too, which is yeah. F yeah. like phenomenal, yeah. and especially like because even like what we do is like just the the path that we're all going down is like there's not many other people out there that are on the same path and then also the people that are that are on the same path there's not many people out there that are like us right and it's super super special just kind of see it all kind of tie together and, and come to fruition so um it is yeah man it's it's been uh it's been so cool to see that but um, yeah, so when it comes to, mm -hmm. like, when it comes to signing somebody up and helping them kind of go through that program, or go through the process of, like, committing to change, like, what's one of the things that kind of stands out to you as, like, a, a pillar for, like, challenging someone's standards and really just helping them see where they've been kind of lying to themselves? Mm. and mm. where they've been letting themselves kind of fall short of their true potential because yes. if we think about like yeah like your role it's like that's fundamentally that's what it is right Agreed. so how 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 i think that happens is by just committing to well, first, having that pure intent of wanting to help. And secondly, being there to just pursue and find the truth. And what I mean by that is just like asking questions and playing out this, getting really to, for example, to know you have the goals of that person, whatever. And it's funny because you start asking questions, you go deeper and layers down, layers down, layers down. And usually the person, they know what they need. They know what they need. They know what they need to do. Hmm. And, and that's, and that's really, that's also really valuable though. That's what happened in that call that you were mentioning before. Yeah. It's about all those questions. He had a realization like mid, mid discovery, he just had a realization about what he needed to do with the business. And he was like, he had to take that turn in the business. It was a big turn because he had to go from like just uh, working in um, in his original country, different language, mm -hmm. to going broader. But the thing there, for example, was like he had some goals about getting to 100, 200k a month. And so I was asking him if he believed that just staying in the country that he is, he's going to get to those numbers. And we didn't run the numbers and it was apparent it was just obvious that he was not going to get there mm. and so it's like okay so like so what do you feel like needs to change and he was like yeah i probably need to go to a different market and i was like okay and then like other stuff comes up blah blah blah, blah and and then it came down that for example and by going deeper and deeper and deeper that he had just some quote-unquote like limiting beliefs or fears or apprehensions about taking that leap mm. and so then it's like you see how the conversation at the start is like very high level and then you go down, 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 yeah. down. And it's like, and then there's that thing that, that he in, the, in that scenario like needed to overcome, which was that apprehension, that limiting belief of him going broader and going to like, yeah, international market, right? But the thing is, we confronted that feeling, that fear, that apprehension, and there was no way around it. It was like, okay, so like if you want to get to 100K a month, 200K a month, that's just a step that you need to take. Like that simple. And then mm. it's either, okay, so now that you see it, like either we bite the bullet or we keep him putting time between you and actually making that decision and like drawing the line in the sand and like just ripping the bandaid off, right? Yeah. And, and then he had a phenomenal guy, had the balls to do it, had the courage, had the potential, like saw it, and then he did it. And then next thing he knows is like in, three, two weeks, he was making like 15, 20 a month, made two, 30K in two weeks or something. Yeah, like but two just, weeks. Well, like you talk with him and everything else, like just went going through the course, uh, applying everything by himself, like gangster showing up to every second coaching call, yeah. playing like gray guy, like class act. And 
I think then double price like from the like within a week. Yep. Started ripping like. Yeah. A few tweaks here and there, and then it's just. Hmm. Go to stratosphere. Yeah. How important is that moment of decision and yes. commitment on that call? And how do you see that, like, go wrong? Or like, mm. how do you see people like? Because obviously, like, so, like when you, when everything comes to the yes. surface, and yes. you, you're like, exactly. you know what exactly. you need to do. Exactly. There's a there's a decision to make whether or not to commit to that next level and leveling up, and it's got nothing to do with a program. Yeah. Nothing to do with a program ever. It's 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 all mm-hmm. internal. Correct. How important is that decision to make right then and there? It's crucial because, like, thing is, that moment, that that moment of decision has been probably been procrastinated on for already like a fair share of time, maybe six months, sometimes years. Yeah. And it's like some people also, it's like they go a little bit in denial in a way, like they think just need to wait another 24 hours or like a day or okay, c- take a couple minutes or whatever to make the decision. But there's really not much because like, mm-hmm. you know what you need to do. And it's like making an analogy is like somebody who smokes cigarettes and is addicted to it and he knows he can't keep on doing it and what the consequences of doing it will be mm-hmm. and what the positives of, of quitting it will be too, right? Yeah. But then the thing is, like, if that person who's done smoking cigarettes, you realize that the consequences and like the positive and like the fact that he just needs to do it, it's like then if you challenge it and be like, okay, so then stop smoking the cigarette right now. And if that person is like, no, no, I'm gonna do it tomorrow, it's like, man, you don't get it. Like, it's it's that thing, like that feeling that if you have in that moment of like that gut wrenching like pain of like ripping the bandaid off and like just stopping that, making that decision of cutting that addiction for example out that's always good like you're just not gonna change it's not gonna go away so you just gotta mm. confront it and like push through it and just make the decision happen right and in this case the addiction instead of cigarettes it's comfort yes exactly and exactly. we get so comfortable with where we're at and it i think it's our ego kind of like playing tricks on us and it the only purpose like it's only designed to just keep us safe and comfortable, but the growth never comes from safety and comfort. And I've had some incredible conversations this week with some of our clients as well. Like um, just an hour ago, we sat down with Adam who jumped into the program. He was in like 15K a month at the time, four months ago. And he jumped in the program and he had like $100 left in his bank account after he signed up. He just went all in. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And I I think a lot of people look for ways for things not to work, but then it's people like that where he looked for a way to make it work, and then now he just came out of a 60K month four months later, and he's here with us in Spain. And I see a very clear division between people that have that that courage, like you said, and the balls to commit versus the ones that that don't and just aren't serious like genuinely just not ready to to change and not yeah. w- really willing to take that step out of that comfort zone and i mean like i guess like that's okay um but it's only okay if like if that's what they want and that's the thing and that is the thing yeah it's not so okay if deep down you know you got more and you want more yeah and i see a lot of people like they claim they want something and they right. keep talking about it but then their actions reflect that they don't actually want it yeah. as bad as they claim they do. Yeah. And I see that just as kind of the, the number one killer to growth and success just in general. And I've experienced that so many times myself too, where I lie to myself. I'm like, no, no, I'm good. I'm chilling. I don't need to, I don't need to commit. I don't need to invest. It's like I invested into another program yesterday and uh, with like an awesome mentor. And again, like two months ago, and then again, like, right, right. right. So, I, like, you just, it, it's a never ending process. I think a lot of people are kind of w- looking for like the one thing that's going to solve everything for them. It's like, ideally, that's what you get for sure, but just that one thing at this level. And then you get there, and then now you have to master level two. 
Yep. Right. And that come, new levels come with new devils. And then you got to like kind of get your get your foot in. And then once you've kind of been stuck and plateauing there, then that's a clear signal that you don't know what you're doing and you need help. Right. And so I've identified that a lot this year and I've kind of just went haywire with it. Like I've probably spent close to a couple hundred grand this year just on education and masterminds and workshops and mentors and like going nuts because I, I identified that like my skill deficiencies were like proper systems and team and leadership because I don't have much experience with that, right? right? And so I was like, well, let me just, I could spend the next 10 years just failing and being miserable and resentful or spend the next 10 months just going all in with this and really developing and, and learning these, these skills and these traits. Um, and I think it's safe to say it's been starting to pay yep. off a little bit, just, yep. especially just in the last three to six months. Yep. Um, most people probably watch this video like if they've been watching my stuff at all because I help people scale with ads and setters, that's all kind of like client acquisition focus. So they probably right. have a problem to do with like lead gen yep. and marketing and like proper funnel structure and yep. stuff like that, right? And so if it's something that like they're not like exceptional at, then that's a clear signal. Like if you don't have your dream clients coming to you every single day, then that's a clear signal that like, hey, it's just, a, it's just a skill deficiency that's completely fixable. You can either try it out for the next few years and just waste a lot of money and time or get help and hopefully we can speed that up. Um, so I think if you look right. at it from that perspective, it's like, like I sucked at ads at one point and I just took like 10 programs over the last like six years on ads and funnels and, and all that stuff. So I got fairly okay and then I can feel like I kind of mastered that um, to some degree at least at this level but then to the next yeah. level like yeah. It, yeah. it was super easy to get to seven figures but then to get to eight I think that's a, a different ball game right so then you can bet your ass I'm going to be joining t as many programs as I can um, to learn how to do that and that's what I'm doing right now yeah. Um, but yeah it's, it's interesting man it's uh, it's really really important for people to just kind of have that level of awareness of where they're at and like what that what their emotions are telling them mm -hmm. how they're feeling mm -hmm. and like what's act if, if you take a step back looking at at yourself objectively from like a third person point of view yep. what's actually going on and like how important that that decision to just commit to your goals and your potential really is you know yeah so it's uh it's it's really Cool to have somebody like you kind of walk them through that and help them identify and understand exactly what's going on um, because like you said otherwise they'll just keep lying to themselves you know and everybody here collectively out of the the clients i think there's like probably 20 some clients here maybe like 18 um not including like the team and plus ones and stuff collectively we're doing just under a million a month which is like over 10 million a year and every single person in here has invested in themselves constantly oh, yeah. for so long. Oh, yeah. And like we've heard horror stories of other programs and stuff like that this week. And we're not <laughs> going to mention any names. Um, chances are you've probably, you've probably heard of them. Um, but either way, it's all a part of their journey. And it's all, it's all a part of the journey. Even if you just get one little golden nugget from something, it, it all becomes worth it. True. And if it just gets you a little bit closer, then it's, I see it as a success. Um, so, yeah, anything, uh, anything else you'd like to say um, to somebody who is mm. kind of looking to, like, they're kind of just feeling frustrated and stuck mm. with where they're at. They're probably very anxious and nervous and kind of scared to take that next step and to, and to commit and kind of take a leap of faith and, and bet on themselves again, especially if they've been burned before. Like, what would you tell that person in order to help them just like actually start seeing the growth that's been so evasive to them where they, they try and get it, but it just keeps escaping for so long? To book a call. <laughs> <laughs> to book a call. No. <laughs> Hell um, yeah. What I would say is just like, I mean, that's, that's, I feel like pure introspection in a way or like just trying to go deep within because you probably have the answers 
of of like what the step what the steps and what the direction is mm -hmm. and so having that having that courage also humility in a way to like go go within mm. kind of yeah address the entire your entire life in a way like who you are what you're missing maybe character trait character traits uh, wise, maybe it's some thing where you are, I don't know, maybe not working as hard, or maybe it could be that you're some limiting beliefs on delegating uh, stuff to other people and like building teams mm. or or whatever else. But it's like, yeah, just just looking at yourself and like asking yourself the hard hard questions and. And I think that's that's all it's like. Once you start asking yourself the hard questions, like dances come. That's when it all starts to click. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. Well, Matthias, it's been an, it's been a pleasure, man. Yeah. It's been a pleasure, pleasure meeting you in person, spending the week together, and just really developing our our connection and our our bond, not just with you, but with the the rest of the team, and just kind of yeah, really just getting to know you on a much deeper personal level. It's it's really cool and it's, it's very confirming, I think, for both of us to just like see that uh, it's the same person in person that it Fuck is yeah. behind the camera. Fuck yeah. And Fuck uh, yeah. it's really it's cool. It's actually to see weird. That. Like, it's not the first time, of course, that I meet somebody that I met first uh, online and mm -hmm. then in person. And like with you when I met you at the airport, I was like, oh, it was just so, it was great. Like, it was so. Normal felt so felt just so good. Felt yeah. so right. Yeah, it's amazing. It's kind of yeah. It's kind of sad thing that like now. I mean, we're last two three days in Marbella, like last two days, mm -hmm. and then coming back home, and then probably like being on the other side of the globe. Yeah, until the next so, one. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, yeah, Matias is based in Italy, and I'm in yeah. Canada, so it's a, a bit of a hike. Yeah, it's a little bit of a hike. Nonetheless, <laughs> I'm gonna be hosting way more of these. Fuck yeah. From here on out. Fuck so yeah. we'll... Uh, Huge. Huge. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. But yeah. man, thanks again for coming on. It's been My such pleasure. a pleasure. Thank you for your My time honor. today. And uh, yeah, if you're watching this and uh, you're ready to, to make that change and to make that leap and really just be willing to have the courage to have your, your standards challenged and to just level up, then we'd love to have the opportunity to kind of facilitate that transformation for you. Um, so if that's you, if you're watching this on YouTube, the link's in the description, you can book a call. Um, obviously, I don't take my sales or enrollment calls anymore. Um, Matias handles all of that because he's just exceptional. And that allows me the time to actually coach and deliver on the promises that we make in our marketing, in our sales, and everything else like that too. Um, so. Yeah, I would love the opportunity to, to meet you one-on-one -on, -one on an onboarding call. Um, but uh, first, you got to go through this guy. So uh, <laughs> if you want to have a conversation, again, we'd love to facilitate your transformation and, and really sure. just be a part of your journey. So sure. uh, booking a call down below. And aside from that, we'll see you in the next one.